Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rent Art Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about comic books I've read, Kickstarters I've backed, indie comics, my mailbox, and all sorts of other stuff, and uh, where you can find these comic books, what's been going on, all that fun stuff. Anyway, now I feel like I'm rambling, but it's a better start to the show than I'm used to, so at least I'm starting. So, um... Looks like I've got better color than I'm used to. Hopefully this is showing up good because the color in uh, the lighting in the last few episodes has been really bad. So what have you guys been watching? Um, I have been watching Sprung on Amazon. She-Hulk with my daughters. And I can't wait to see that latest episode that just dropped. Everybody's uh, on the Twitters about the Daredevil and stuff. And so, but i got to wait until all, I have a day off and my daughters all have a day off at the same time very frustrating uh, but you know it's a lot funner watching it with them than just sitting there watching shows alone and I've been watching a lot of Star Trek my employer recently gave all employees uh, Paramount Plus and uh, so I've been taking full advantage of that I've already watched all of the uh, lower decks and now I'm making my way through the uh, Star Trek Discovery awesome show can't freaking say enough about it because I mean it's amazing time travel involved, all sorts of fun stuff. So yeah, I'm watching that, all that. And uh, I wanted to bring up a few topics about Kickstarter that uh, have been bugging me. And so a good amount of the Kickstarters that I back were found through social media. So I love social media. If you're, uh, if you're on the Twitters, follow me and uh, tag me in your uh, Kickstarter posts. And uh, I will I will take a look at it. Message me on any of the social media platforms, and I will take a look at your Kickstarters. Anyway, because that's how that's how I'm finding most of these Kickstarters, or through the uh, someone I follow backed this project, and I check it out, St stuff like that. But yeah, sometimes I will follow a uh, Kickstarter campaign that I'm unsure of, due to either money being tight, or you know you don't you don't know because. It's a whole 29 days till the Kickstarter campaign ends, and you don't know where you, what your money situation is going to be about at the end of the month. So I'll follow it, and if I'm really sure, then then I'll be notified uh, 48 hours. Or I think they're now down to uh, 10 hours before it ends. They'll email you and say, check this campaign out before it ends. And so I check it out, and then I, I'm like, oh my gosh, so I have to move money around, make sure, and then I back the project. Anyways, so yeah message me on your Kickstarters, because, uh, yeah, I do love to, and if, even if I can't back it, I will help out by uh, mentioning it on the show, stuff like that, so, but I find it tremendously annoying when a project launches before the previous campaign is even currently in the mail, or if, or they even back, or they'll start launching a new campaign the day that they mail out the packages, and you know, early bird rewards and all that fun stuff. I'm not going to back your project if your thing is currently in the mail and hasn't got to me yet. And it, Or I will back it and get the early bird, but then if I read it, I feel awkward about backing out if I didn't like it. Stuff like that. So please, at least hold off a, a couple weeks after you mail out the things and then launch it, like when you're sure that everybody's received it or has had a chance to at least have it in their hands before you launch your Kickstarter. That's just my own personal pet peeve. I mean, please, dudes, come on. And, uh, yeah. And I'm not... Even if you say I've sent out the digital rewards, I'm not a digital reader. I'm not going to do that. I like to hold it in my hands and uh, stuff like that. So please, wait until all the packages have arrived at your... Uh, backers hands before you launch your next camp campaign and uh, yeah give us a little buffer especially where uh, I am reading the rewards or the comics and then reviewing them I like to have a little time to set up have my notes prepared so that when I do read it and loved it I can tell everybody about your campaign and uh, yeah so yeah and please this is just just for me, maybe. Uh, 
include all of your all of the people working on your project include all of their social medias when you uh, go through the details about explaining who's on your team and who's drawing it who's lettering it throw on their Instagrams their Facebooks their or their preferred uh, social media just just so that we so that I have a way to tag you and let you know that I've done a review or you know all that cool stuff all right so that's enough complaining about Kickstarters and that because you know what the truth is I love Kickstarter I've backed over 300 maybe 400 I'm, I better look at it and uh, I backed over that many campaigns and I mean not all of them have been winners but I guarantee at least uh, Oh man, at least 390 of the campaigns out of the 400 have been freaking winners. I mean, I am loving this comics boom. Um, getting such a such a wider variety of reads than if I were just to stick to the big two. And uh, I mean, come on. As much as I love Multiple Man, there isn't that many Multiple Man stories out there. But yeah, I, I love in Kickstarter comics or independent comics... Um, that when a character dies, it's not just a gimmick to, uh, hey, we're going to bring back cells when Wolverine's popular again, or, you know, uh, and Superman. So everybody's died so many times. But in comics, if somebody dies, you don't know if they're coming back. Chances are they are not coming back. Because it's a, these stories are just, I don't know, different. They're not upholding to who's going to buy the toy and whatever. So, uh... Yeah, I'm loving Kickstarter comics. You never know what's going to happen in a story. It's crazy stuff. And, uh, yeah. So, let me let me tell you a little bit about who I am. I am Gary Brentner. I said I'm uh, of Rentar... Oh my gosh, I'm messing up my own title. I am Gary Brentner of Rentnarb Studios Comics. I am the everything of Rentnarb Studios Comics. The writer, the artist, the letter, the colorist, the publicist, the... Yeah, ad campaigns, everything. is all me. I've been making Peter Pan the Vampire comics since uh, the 90s. Since 1996 is the earliest that I even drew Peter Pan as a vampire. All because uh, I went to a theater and watched Interview with the Vampire with my friends. And it hit me in a moment when uh, Claudia was saying... That she would never be able to grow old and never be able to be a woman like the woman in the street selling flowers. And that hit me. I It, it struck a chord with me. And I've been watching Hook a lot uh, when I was a kid. I used to watch it every day. And uh, it just clicked. Peter Pan is a vampire. That's why, that's why he can't grow older. But in my comics, he actually does grow older. He uh, ages at least one year per every ten that passes. So, yeah. Out of in a hundred years, he's only aged about ten, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, enough. Of, that's confusing. Um, so, I currently have three issues of Peter Pan the Vampire, and a different variety of ways you can read them. You can read them in color, hard copy, black and white, hard copy. Those are just a little bit cheaper than the color copies, and you can read them digitally for free. All three issues entirely free digitally, and eat. Even if you buy the uh, hard copy, I would love it if you even went on there and got the digital copy just just to help my algorithm better. And uh, so, and if you read any of my comics, uh, post pictures of them uh, or uh, tell me what you think about them. You could even private message me, email me at peterpanthevampire at yahoo.com, and tell me what you think. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, you could use the hash br hash brown. <laughs> Man, I've been watching uh, Cobra Kai too much. You can use the hashtag rentnarb, and that'll I'll find that because I'm always looking at that. And uh, yeah, I would love to hear what you say about them, even criticisms if if they're respectful, as long as you're not swearing, because I'm not going to swear on here. Uh, at least I hope I'm not swearing. I haven't been swearing. Whatever. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I'd love to know what you think of my Peter Pan the Vampire comics, and I understand there's a little uh, transition from I 
originally started coloring them in colored pencil, but since then I've uh, tabled next to uh, Brian K. Miller and uh, the co-founder, or I mean the founder, I guess it's co-founder because he did it with his wife, of uh, Hi-Fi Color for Comics, and I bought his uh, textbooks teaching you how to color for comics. And I learned how to color, so my third issue, my fourth issue, they are colored on the computers instead of colored pencil. But who knows, maybe I'll go back to that. I don't know. I'm trying all sorts of new stuff. I'm doing a new thing right now um, where I, when I color them, or when I ink them, I do some grade scale on a whole different sheet and put those two layers together. Well, I'll have to make some videos of that and show you what I'm th doing. Anyway, well, this is a long intro today. Um, so yeah, Peter Pan the Vampire Comics. Find them on IndiePlanet.com. And uh, yeah, I print through Kablam. I recently had a, uh, I was at a Comic Con, and I sold almost my entire total of comic books and uh, came home with about nine or so issues. So I got to do a reprint. But Kablam was recently in smack dab in the middle of uh, Hurricane Ian, so they boarded up for a little while. And uh, now I gotta wait until funds are good. Make sure a bunch of Kickstarters aren't going out at the same time when I go and make an order. But yeah. Oh, and check out this print. Peter Pan uh, holding Tinkerbell. And uh, I thought that would be a cool thing. Uh, I will send this to you for free if you message me your address. That's just me. I'll send it as a postcard. You'll get that in the mail. That'll be cool. Anyway, that's enough intro for now. Time to get on to the reviews. Uh, one of the books I reviewed, one of the books I read this week is a book called Drumsticks of Doom. Yeah, that's an awesome Kaylin Smith cover. She does uh, the for goodness, for, for goodness Sake comics that I love. Oh my gosh, I can't wait until I get the next volume of that. So, Dooms, Doomsticks, Drumsticks of Doom is a black and white comic, line art comic. I don't really think there's any grayscale in here. This is a line art comic and it is uh, very cool. It's very metal, which is cool. And so this is in a world, an alternate universe where what if the Beatles weren't the number one band, but uh, Black Sabbath was the number one band of all time, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, alchemy and stuff like that were uh, brought into school systems and popularized, so, and magic and spells and demons. So this is a strange world, and uh, this girl, Lana, she comes across some uh, drumsticks that are enchanted or do spelled or whatever, some kind of blood spell was done on him and uh, it's, all, it's all cool. She starts gaining mag magical powers, she fights off a werewolf in the middle of broad daylight which is interesting. So very cool see where this is going. I can't wait to uh, see what's next. I've already backed issue number two. It's on Kickstarter right now which only has a few hours left to go so when I get to the campaign corner of my segment um, I will tell you all about Drumsticks of Do Doom 2, but yeah, this is cool. Oh yeah, and it came with some awesome, awesome extras. I've got, I have two guitar picks that say Drumsticks of Doom on them, which is kind of funny that Drumsticks of Doom is on guitar picks instead of drums. I'm sure that'll become a thing. somebody here. That'll become a thing sooner or later and uh, yeah so I got some guitar picks. I have two daughters that play guitar so I will be handing those off to them. And I have an awesome button that can go on uh, my backpack that says drumsticks of doom which I thought it was funny because when it was upside down it looked like it said wood. But yeah drumsticks of doom that's gonna go on my backpack. That's very cool. Oh yeah, and I got two, two awesome stickers that I can put on things. Very cool. And now, next comic. 
I read is this one is called The Encoded. I've had this one for a good while. I, for some reason, lost track of it and I never saw any uh, Kickstarters for the next issues or anything. But this is this is the comic of... It is a comic book from a... Oh, man. I lost track of what I'm saying. It is the comic book about man versus machines, but this is in a future which I really love how they did uh, they did some um, a montage of uh, political history telling and uh, you know there's some um, where is it right there there's my hand there's some uh, spores from COVID in there Bitcoin here it's interesting stuff and uh, oh man Good thing I didn't change to that page. So there, there is also some nudity in this book. Be, be very careful with that. I uh, brought this book to Plasma to read with me. And I have been warned because somebody looked over my shoulder and saw that I was reading something bad. It was probably Sunstone or uh, who knows what. Cheeky or Thirsty from Pat Shand. I don't know. But I got in trouble and they warned me that uh, if they see that again, I cannot donate Plasma anymore. So he. <laughs> Got to be careful what I read. I didn't know this one had adult content in it until I turned to that page, but that it's got some really cool stuff. Um, androids fighting androids, and uh, we got a big old uh, Megatron-looking thing there. Very cool stuff. So I love the art style. I love the story, and Encoded is currently on Kickstarter right now for uh, the collected volumes of it. And so I'm on there back in that one as well. I got a cool little print here that is signed by artist and writer in gold marker. That is cool. I love it. I need to put that up on my wall of prints. And I also got a pin. A This pin. Oh, man. Let me hold up the cover again. So see that little baby there with the uh, phone cord, umbilical cord thing going on there? Well, I got a pin of that. Unfortunately, the umbilical cord part fell off. I think it goes there. Yeah, I think it goes right there. Anyway, it fell off. I got some JB Weld. I can fix that. You know how I love pins, too. So that kind of sucks that I broke it. And uh, not not any fault on the mailers or, uh, or the people that made the campaign that packaged it or anything. This was me when I was trying... When I was checking it out, I accidentally popped it off. So, whoops, that's on me. I will throw some JB Weld on there, and I'll show you it when I wear it to church. But yeah, I'll get that fixed, and all that fun stuff. Love my pins, that'll be a cool one to wear, and especially where it's a little robot baby looking thing. And, what else did I read? Oh yeah, and I read Destiny New York volume five four volume four here and uh i love my destiny new yorks i probably got some more on the read pile and i got more coming in the mail these this is one where i can back it without ever having read it because i've been with them since uh, at least volume two and uh can't can't let this one pass me by it's too good of a story not to catch it up and uh all the uh spin-offs Gangster Ass Barista and um, Smoke Weed See the Future is one I just got in the mailbox. So that's in the read pile. All good stuff. And I'm going to have to be reading that one soon, though, because uh, it does have a Kickstarter coming out soon, I think. So, what happened in. Let's see if I can show you some artwork on this. This is a grayscale book. Very good stuff. Um, very fine freaking art. Uh, done by Alyssa Ramboli and letters by Jim Campbell. Very cool stuff. Oh yeah, my name's on the thank you pages. There we go. We got a big old thank you page there. And I am labeled as Gary Brantner of Rent Arm Studios Comics. So that's cool. I love seeing that on the thank you pages. Because, you know, that's my Kickstarter name, so might as well be what I get thanked as. So yeah, some something happens at Taylor's house. Taylor is uh, 
Taylor is a seer. She's got black eyes filled with stars, and she's the main character of Smoke Weed See the Future. Something happens at Taylor's house in California that spurs Logan to uh, spurs Logan and Taylor to visit New York. And relationships have been getting stronger in these books. I'm loving that part. And some are planning for babies, some of the characters. And the whole thing with this senator guy uh, is coming to a conclusion. It's nuts. I can't tell you what happens because that's a spoiler. But, I mean, you got to read it. There's some really cool stuff. This is about a world where magic is everyday life and prophecies. And they even go to college to learn magic. And that's what Destiny New York is, is uh, it's college, campus, all that fun stuff. So it's nuts. I didn't see this end coming. It's crazy. And uh, so many things change for all these characters that I am excited to see what's next in the next volumes and in the Smokeweed fu See the Future, all the, all the spin-offs. And I hear uh, Pat Shand is going to be ramping up this year doing Kickstarters back-to-back -back super fast, trying to get faster at them, and uh, even went to a different printer so that he could get the books faster and do the Kickstarters faster. So, yeah, it's awesome. I can't wait for more Destiny. Uh, you know I'm here for it. I'm on board. I've got some Prison Witch, which I don't think is connected, but maybe it is. That would be so awesome if it is, because who knows? It could be all the same universe. So I got some Prison Witch coming in the mail, too. That's another one of my favorites, so... Good stuff, and um, yeah. So, uh, uh, normally on this show, I like to talk about the t-shirts I'm wearing. This is a Red Hot Chili Peppers t-shirt with wings on it. And I picked this one up at the old Hot Topical. And the reason I'm wearing this shirt today is because I read a book about birds and, uh, and all that. And so I wanted to be, I like to wear shirts that match the books that I'm reviewing even if it's just remotely vague like this, because it has wings. And uh, so this book has got an interesting story behind it, because I found this book at Fanex Comic-Con Salt Lake. And uh, while I was at Fanex, I came across a Colleen Palmer and her table, and she I started looking at this book, and she tar started telling me that she has a Kickstarter running right now, for um, a book called Monstrosities. It's an anthology and she's done a little part of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love Kickstarter comics. And uh, we got talking. And so I, I picked up this guy, this book. It's not your standard comic size. It's just got, it's got a little bit more size to it. Well, see, let me hold up. Destiny is comparison. See, you got an extra inch here hanging off the end and a little bit more height also. But, yeah. So, yeah, this is entirely... Oh, hold on here, let me get out my notes. Oh yeah, I got a little bookmark from her too. I, I wish I could follow her on the Twitters, uh, at Pixel Gremlin, but Twitter put a little cap on my um, amount of people I could follow. That's a really cool looking watercolor bookmark. It's awesome. And yeah, there's got her signature thing on the back. I like how she does the square thing. It's very similar to my GB square. So, um, this is called Crow and the Eternal Night, and it is written and illustrated by Colleen Palmer. And the entire book is in black and white, zip tones all over the place, uh, toner dots, whatever you call them. I call them toner dots. So yeah, it is very cool. Come on, focus. Yeah, check out that artwork. So this is the tale a, of a zombie apocalypse. And you know, sure, we've had a lot of zombie apocalypses. There's uh, The Walking Dead and uh, Snow White zombie apocalypse told us through the eyes of fairy tales and what would happen if the zombie apocalypse was there. But this is a zombie apocalypse told from the perspective of birds. And these birds get together and have a meeting. Owls, parrots, pe not Pikachus, uh, nah, I can't think of the word now. Parakeets, Pikachus, same thing, right? Anyway, so these birds 
they get together and they're like, hey, we need, we need to do something about the zombie apocalypse. What about you vultures? Uh, you guys eat dead carcass carcasses and stuff, but uh, the vulture says, we are only a few in number, and even we are vulnerable to turning. And so they're... So this cockatoo, he's trying to figure out what to do, and the crow volunteers, and he says he will go do what he can, and uh, so it gets brought up that there are these things called the cur, and if they bring the cur up from an old mine uh, that leads to him down under the earth, the cur would eat all the dead people, and uh, so the crow volunteers, and check out this freaking artwork there oh my gosh beautiful yeah love line art mixed with the uh, toner dots so good and so this crow goes on the journey he he runs into a mouse to get information the mouse gets eaten by a zombie snake so good um, so much in go going on with this birds and stuff but then the crow ends up at the river sticks which I did not see that coming and this uh this possessed boat takes him through the river sticks to meet the cur and yeah i was not expecting that supernatural mythology element to it but it was awesome very awesome take on the zombie apocalypse i love this book can't wait to see what's in the monstrosities kickstarter that i'm back in and uh yeah amazing artwork insane Here's the moon. Very cool stuff. Uh, so the crow talks to the moon, and the moon answers back. Very cool stuff. You just got to read it to see. Um, I will try and find links to where you can find the the crow and the eternal night because it was freaking awesome. So I'm so glad that I went wandering around Artist Alley at Fan X and found that book. Now I'm on to. The campaign corner. This is the section where I talk about everything that's on Kickstarter or Indiegogo and uh, telling you why you should back it, why I backed it, and that's it. Pretty much it. Um, so yeah, let's get on to uh, running Kickstarters. First up is Drumsticks of Doom 1 and 2, so you can get the book I just showed you, and you can get issue 2, but unfortunately this has hours to go. It is at 102% funded. It's a project they love, Kickstarter loves, project we love, that's what they call them. So issue two of the Heavy Metal Saga is moshing towards you. When Black Sabbath, not the Beatles, became the world's most famous band, the universe has changed, was changed forever, musically and otherwise. Lost arts like alchemy were more com made common. Demons were summoned and some of them stuck around. This is a 24 page black and white comic. It's freaking awesome. If you look into the uh, add-ons, you can get your own set of guitar picks. You can get your own set of the drumsticks. Very cool if you have someone in your life that is uh, musically inclined or if you just like collecting that kind of stuff. Check out Drumsticks of Doom. It has hours to go. Hopefully I post this before it's over because I mean, oh my gosh, so good. Uh, am I blurry? What's going on here? Focus. All right. Recall is on Kickstarter right now. An 88-page graphic novel inspired by the Betty and Barney Hill abduction. The first widely pat publicized alien abduction in the U.S. It's black and white with, I think, bits and pages of colored. It's a project we love on Kickstarter. Recall is on Kickstarter until October 11th and is currently 256% funded. Destiny New York, Volume 6. Oh my gosh, Volume 6. I can't believe there's six volumes of that goodness. Logan was the subject of prophecy. Lilith is the last surviving member of a mystical crime family, and their epic love story continues. So... I mean, I don't know what else I can say about this book, but it's freaking awesome. Buy all six volumes of it. Buy all the tie-ins. I mean, it's freaking awesome. It's a project we love on Kickstarter, and it is currently 236% funded. It's awesome. And uh, so 
Check out Destiny New York Volume 6 on Kickstarter until October 14th. Monstrosities, a horror anthology. This is the one that ties into uh, Crow and the Eternal Night. Monstrosities, a horror anthology, is 100 pages of horror comic anthology featuring insanely awesome artists, insanity-inducing monsters never before seen on the page by indie creators. Frankenstein. Oh, I got a timer going off. All right, Frankenstein, the Unconquered 1 and 2, an action horror comic, is on Kickstarter right now. Frankenstein's monster thaws from the ice 500 years in the future to find a bombed out apocalypse as hideous and broken as he is. 20 pages of awesomeness. I'm back in this one because uh, I love Frankenstein stories. I love bringing Frankenstein into other timelines and working on it, which I plan on doing in my own comic eventually. But uh, yeah, Frankenstein's The Unconquered is on Kickstarter until October 20th. It's 156% funded. Check that one out. The Encoded, the collected volume of Splintered Souls, is on Kickstarter right now. The breakout, action-packed, seductive series with a twist on the classic Man vs. Machine theme is now collected in a 144-page volume. It is 75% funded. So please get on there. Help me get it over 100% so I can get the collected volume and uh, check it out. I want to read the rest of this story. So it needs to hit 100% for me to do that. It's on Kickstarter until October 28th. I Am Hexed, Volume 1. Oh my gosh, this is a good book. Uh, I love, I have all four of the single issues. And now that you can get, right now, Volume 1 collects all four of those issues of Kirsten, Kristen, Kirsten? Sorry. Kirsten Tom, Thompson's, Tom, oh gosh. Kirsten Thompson's, original comic about the political structure the struggles of modern day witches it is a very cool story I love the art style and uh, it's a project we love on Kickstarter is 272 percent funded and it's on the Kickstarter until November 2nd Planar Jane 7 is on Kickstarter right now a modern day story of murder this is the final issue of Planar Jane, the story of a seemingly ordinary girl who becomes a brutally efficient killer for hire. 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 Okay. Black and white and sometimes red artwork, uh, 24 to 28 pages each issue. I definitely guarantee you reading this one. It is on Kickstarter until November 6th, and it was 99% funded when I was looking at it, so check that one out. Back it. Good stuff. Coming soon to Kickstarter is I Took a Hammer to Hell from Matt Garvey. Uh, I recently backed a comic called Chances Are. Already got it. It was like a week later after the campaign ended and it was in my mailbox. Unbelievable, dude. And so check out I Took a Hammer to Hell on Kickstarter. I will start talking about that once it's fully going and I will read Chances Are and give you a review of that so that I know where I'm standing on that one too. Memoirs of the Reanimator, a figurine, a first issue, and a radio drama are all on Kickstarter right now from Dark Side Films, Dark Side Ent Entertainment. Uh, this is from the same team that br brings you, um, oh man, I'm blanking on the name. Uh, let's see, look around at my prints, what have I got? Anyway. Memoirs of the Reanimator figurine. Sorry, I'm having a really t hard time focusing because my timer's going off and I'm worried about the music. It's a Ben Folds song, so hopefully it's not loud enough to hear it and then make me not be able to post this because of a song. I've had that happen before. So that brings me to the end of the show. Uh, tell me about your campaigns, your Kickstarters, your Indiegogos, or even if you have an Indie comic on Indie Planet or on uh, Etsy or something. Let me know about it. Say, hey, check out my book. I want you to back it. I want you to look at it. I want you to talk about it. So hit me up. Message me on Facebook. 
Twitter, or email me at peterpanthevampire at yahoo.com. And I will, I will look into it. I will check it out. I love Kickstarters, so please don't feel embarrassed about telling me about them. I am on Patreon if you like what you're hearing and uh, you want to support this show, you, you want to see more episodes of this, or if you just want to throw some bones my way, um, check me out on the Patreon. I've had one for a long time and uh, I still have no subscribers, but you know, it's all right. I'm going to still make it in this show. And if you back me on the uh, Patreons, I will hold up a card with your name on it and your social medias and say, Hey buddy, hey Gary Brandner, thank you for uh, supporting me on the Patreons. And uh, that's pretty much it. So, let's see, what's, what else have I got here? Oh yeah. And I've also got Mailbox. Da, 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 bam. What's in Rent Arbs? Mailbox. Yeah, sorry about that. So, this is the only thing I've got in the mailbox right now, and it is called The House of Fear, Volume 1 and Volume 2. That says, Thank you, Gary James. So, yeah, I've got two little teeny hardbacks of uh, House of Fear, Volume 1 and 2. This got me excited. I think there's some Peter Pan art in here. These kids do a play of Peter Pan in their school, and I think it's haunted. So, I don't know. I can't wait to get to that. Throw that in the read pile and see where I'm at. So, thank you for watching Renarb Studios, and uh, I better get going. See, see what the... Maybe it wasn't a timer. Maybe it was a phone call. So, better get going. It could be one of my kids saying, come pick me up at church or school. And uh, whatever. So thank you. Follow out Rent Arp Studios anywhere you can find Rent Arp Studios. I'm on Redbubble, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. I have an Instagram, but I don't use it. You know how it is. So 